and welcome back. Yes, it is the Tamiya 148 scale F4B Phantom 2. And yes, this is going to be part one um, of the construction uh, of the, the main cockpit and a few other little bits and pieces that will go with the cockpit. And yeah, what also I'm going to do is I'm going to build, hopefully, uh, the Zokimura uh, F4, um, but the J version. Just to give a bit of um, sort of like comparison with the two kits and to see which I think is better. Um, I have already built the Tsukimori, um, the E version, um, and it was really, really good. However, I'm now building the Tamiya one, but I'm also going to build the other one because I like Phantoms. Anyway, let's go to Scalemates. So with Scalemates, Scalemates is the website that I do go to um, when I'm wanting to buy a kit because you can get all sorts of information before you buy, as in tickle options, aftermarkets, reviews, and also you can download the actual um, yeah instructions. They are typical Tamiya, um, very clear, very precise, um, colour call-outs throughout, and you really can't go wrong. If you do go wrong, then yeah, there is something wrong with you. Mm. Anyway, those are the instructions. Uh, like I said, you can go into Scalemates and you can download them at your leisure and have a look for yourself. So, let's have a look at the kit then. Well, let's start it anyway. Right, go for it. So, starting off then with the uh, the box or the box art, it's uh, yeah, it's rather nice. But I won't be doing it in this livery. I shall be doing it in uh, the Sundowners, which is actually in the box. So, right. I am going to do, although I mentioned it, uh, a bit of a comparison between this, the Tamiya, and the Zuckimura, um kit. I have actually built the Zuckimura one before, like I've mentioned. And those moving pictures in your top left-hand corner is me doing the actual cockpit. Yeah, it is a nice kit. But then again... I'm pretty sure that this Tammy one is going to be as equally good. Now, I will sort of like give you a comparison if there are any pitfalls or X, Y, and Z. I don't envisage any pitfalls, um, so to speak, but I will do a comparison. I will give you an unbiased opinion on the two kits. So let's play some music and do some building. So starting off with the main cockpit, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you basically start off and you glue in um, the instruments uh, for the Rio um, and also the, well, start off with the rudder pedals for the actual pilot. Not that you're actually going to see it, um, but it's just proof that you just pop it in and glue it and that's it. That's all you've got to do. Um, test fitting. Even with a Tammy kit, yeah, I would always say to actually do a test fit and also make sure you read the instructions because me drilling a hole there, um, I didn't. And I thought, how the hell is this part supposed to go in? Read the instructions, Lenny, and you'll find out, you burk. 
So yeah, I drilled the hole so the peg can go in the hole and I can glue it, see? I told you, read instructions. Anyway, so these are the firewalls. Um, well, part of the firewalls for the, the pilot and the Rio. Um, the detail actually on the walls themselves is pretty damn good. Um, most of it is um, molded on. There is only one part that you need to put on. Um, I believe that will be the pilot's um, firewall. And and just, well, the only thing you've got to do next is to put the rails on for the ejector seats. And that's it. You just pop it in, glue it, and forget about it. So, yeah. Let's play some more music before I make myself even worse. So with the ejector seats, uh, they are a multi-part affair, um, as you would expect, um, and they do fit together extremely well. Um, and the level of detail you do get on them is, again, quite substantial. However, if you wanted to go for the aftermarket route, as in some resin seats with the molded on straps, then by all means, go for it. But I wouldn't bother um, because you do get, like I said, quite a decent amount of detail um, on the kit uh, parts themselves um, the only thing I would change is uh, the seat harnesses now you can either get yourself some photo etch or maybe some 3d uh, decal um, replacements or you can just stick the pilot on um, which I'm going to be doing um, for this particular kit um, and that's it I yeah really happy with the actual kit itself as in the level of detail that you do get on well just the bang seats themselves so so yeah there you go nicely done fits really nice and yeah it'll paint up really really well so yeah kit parts good for me So, painting. Right, priming first. Um, all I'm going to use for that is Tamiya's Dark Grey, which is XF24, and using Hataka's Lacquer, um, the Light Gold Grey. Now, whether it's right or wrong, I, I don't know. I don't really care. Um, but I've used it anyway. So, I'm not going to bore you to death with uh, priming. So, we're going to go straight into the Light Gold Grey. Now, I've used the two combos um of these paints basically just to give a bit more of a I don't know a contrast and shadow uh, between the two 
Bearing in mind though, once you put everything together in the cockpit, the side panels, um, and actually within the fuselage, you're gonna lose quite a lot of that anyway. But what does remain will hopefully give you a bit more of a, I don't know, a worn, lived-in look. That's what I'm going for anyway. So, so yeah, there we go. Cracking on with the painting. Now, I swap my airbrush for a hairy stick. Yes, this is my wet palette. A uh, takeaway tub with two sponges and some baking paper. And yeah, that's all I use. So, rather, well, rather than actually masking everything off and painting it and yeah, I tend to do now is the brush paint. Now, I use uh, Vallejo white tops. Yes, Vallejo, not Vallejo, Vallejo. Yes, and I've used uh, a black grey, not a complete black, a black grey. And basically, it's a case of getting back to the old school things, um, pointy, hairy stick with some paint, and yeah, you just paint it. So yeah, wow, rocket science. So after all the black bits have been painted, it's time for um, some dry brushing. Uh, for this I've used XF80 Royal Light Grey and it is like we normally do with uh, brush paint or uh, dry brushing. Get most of it off the brush and yeah, very lightly just go over it and you'll be able to see uh, the detail actually just come, well just pops out and smacks you right in the ghoulies. Um, and yeah, it's really, really good. Um, what I tend to do is I go like one direction, then turn it around and do the other one, just so that all the parts that actually stick out, ooh, uh, um, get a covering of roll like grey. So yeah, dry brushing for me um, is quite essential because it, you, well, it brings out so much detail um, actually within a kit. And if you've got a kit like this, then yeah, it's going to pop and again it's going to grab you by the short and curlies and think and you're going to think whoa aren't i good well i don't anyway anyway with that um all i'm going to do now is just bang on the actual kit decals for the instruments and for that it's just a case of just dipping in water playing with them to try to get them on properly like i've struggling here um yeah just take your time and I want you got them on, yeah, leave them be, and yeah, you'll be able to stick some sort of like decal solution on them. So yeah, they are all nicely snug and fit, and yeah, whatever. And I use um, Meg Ammo's uh, decal fix, which is quite a strong solution, so just be careful with it. So yeah, just dab it on, wait for the magic to happen, and, and yeah, you'll have a nicely decaled instrument panel, believe it or not. So, with that done, we can crack on with a bit of weathering. Now, I'll use, uh, well, for this one, it's going to be Meg's Dark Wash. And basically, it's going to be a case of just tap and flow, and it'll be all over the place. So, yeah. Oh, and FYI, that strange noise in the background was not me having a windy arse.
So to take it off then, I use the enamel thinners from Tamiya or X20. And basically stick a, a cleanish brush, uh, soak it up and basically go over where I've been. Uh, basically moving and manipulating um, the wash um, to get the desired effect that I'm after. Um, basically keeping the, the wash in sort of like near where the um, the raised parts are just to give a bit more of a sort of like a shadowing effect and I'm basically just taking the access off the uh, the larger parts where it's really not needed and it would look extremely overdone. So yeah, it's just a question of moving it about, taking it off and basically leaving um, really what you want. So name of the game is like with a lot of things in scale modeling. If you're happy with it, stop and yeah reassess if you're still happy with it stop simple as that anyway on to the next bit which is using the uh well the light gray panel line wash and all i'm going to use for that uh well for it is the the black paneling on the actual uh side consoles or the instrument panels on the pilot's um section and basically, to take it off, I do exactly the same with the, the uh, well, with the dark wash. And that is as simple as that. So, with that done, it's just a case of um, sticking it all together. So, here we go. One thing I will say is when you're putting the uh, firewall in uh, for the pilot in Rio, uh, it is an extremely tight fit, it, but it does go in. But uh, yeah, just ease caution, but yeah, it does fit. Okay, that's practically it for the, the cockpit for the Tamiya uh, F4B. Um, and yeah, the only thing I've got to re really put back into um, at the end of it are the two pilots and the Rio's um, instrument panel, which will be actually further on down when everything's closed up. But anyway, hope you like it. Um, it goes together really well. I haven't got no qualms or issues with it whatsoever. Uh, and even when you put the, the bang seats in, they just slot in really, really well. So, that was part one of the Tamiya F4B Phantom build, um, as in the cockpit. Now, the next video um, for the Tamiya one will be um, putting the front undercarriage together and basically putting everything together. It'll be the main build one um, video. Um, but hopefully the next one are, um, after this one will be the Zukimura uh, cockpit where I'll be doing a comparison between the two. Um, basically, amount of detail, the fit, X, Y and Z and anything else I can think of. 
Anyway, so look forward to that one. Yay. So anyway, just remains me to say thanks very much for watching and I will catch you on the next video. Ta-da.